Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and this video is brought to you by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the app that is a must have for NBA fans who enjoy or want to go see games live. They let you see the view from the seat before you purchase, as well as rank the seat on a scale from one to 100 to make sure that you are getting the absolute best deal. Speaking of best deal, you can enter the promo code SDC to receive $20 off your first order to make it an even better deal. Download the app in the description box below. DeAndre Jordan is most likely one of the biggest names that should be moved by this NBA trade deadline. At this point, the Clippers would have to be beyond delusional to think that if DeAndre Jordan were to opt out of his contract at the end of the year, that he would be returning. He almost left you guys once for the Dallas Mavericks already. That was back when the Clippers still had potential. Now that the Clippers are more of a sinking ship in the NBA, it is time for DeAndre Jordan to grab a lifeboat and go somewhere else. Meaning that the Clippers should trade him before he leaves for nothing in a few months. And of course, where else should DeAndre Jordan be traded to but the Cleveland Cavaliers? As reports came out yesterday saying that the Clippers would accept a trade of Tristan Thompson, Channing Frye, and the 2018 Nets pick for DeAndre Jordan, which at first seems kind of fair. The Nets pick is the only real piece the Cavs have to offer if they're looking to make a deal. Real quick, here's my thing on this. Look, we all talk about the Cavs looking to make a trade, but we don't even know for sure if the Cavs are looking to make any major deals at all. And I can say this because the Nets pick is the only real trade piece that the Cleveland Cavaliers have and they have said it many times that they are not looking to trade the Brooklyn Nets pick. Everyone keeps forgetting that the Cavaliers are using this Nets pick as their safety net. They are scared to death that LeBron James is going to leave them in the summer of 2018 and if that happens and they trade the Nets pick they will have nothing. They trade the Nets pick for DeAndre Jordan and don't win a championship. That means LeBron's gone. That means Isaiah Thomas is gone. That means DeAndre Jordan is gone. Love is only one year away from being gone. Then you are left with J.R. Smith, Tristan Thompson, Channing Frye, Iman Shumpert, and Jay Crowder. Whereas if you keep the Nets pick, at least you might have a possibility of having a young player that could possibly become something in the future. Granted, it's not even looking like the Brooklyn Nets pick will be a top five pick at this point. But of course, there is another side to this argument. And that side says that the Cavs have LeBron James right now, the best player in the NBA. If you have the best player in the NBA, you owe it to that player to do everything you can to get them to win a championship. And if that means trading away this Nets pick for a player like DeAndre Jordan, then that's the thing that you have to do. You gotta take risks to win big. And on top of that, you have to think that the reward for doing this trade is actually higher than the risk. The reward is higher than the risk. Because of course the best case scenario is you trade the pick, you win a championship, that means LeBron James stays, most likely Isaiah Thomas stays, maybe even DeAndre Jordan stays, and you have a high chance of winning a championship again next year. If you trade the pick and you don't win, let's say best case scenario, that Brooklyn pick is the fifth pick in the draft. You lose out on the fifth pick in the draft, even though I think it's gonna be more like the seventh. You lose LeBron James, you lose all this other stuff that you would have lost if you didn't trade the pick in the first place. It's gonna come down to to whether or not the Cavs value the chance to win a championship more than they value the chance to possibly get a player that could become something in the NBA draft with like the fifth, sixth, seventh, or even eighth pick. Just think about it though, there's not even a guarantee that the player that they get with the Brooklyn Nets pick will be a good player. They could risk the opportunity of winning another championship and keeping LeBron James to draft the next Anthony Bennett. If they draft a bust with their Brooklyn Nets pick and LeBron James leaves this summer, you know how big of an L the Cleveland Cavaliers will take. All that being said, if I am the Cleveland Cavaliers, I am trading the pick. Because once again, when you have the best player in the NBA, your chance to win a championship isn't five to 10 years down the road with a player that you don't even know exists in the NBA draft, is right now with the best player in the NBA. 